religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo. Più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, Perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Dieci racconti di solidarietà e aiuto concreto. Storie ricche d'amore, riscatto, coraggio e cura. Storie di persone che donano e che ispirano a costruire una società inclusiva. Una mano a chi sostiene. Storie. Il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è... Innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo. Più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli, perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Dieci racconti di solidarietà e aiuto concreto. Storie ricche d'amore, riscatto, coraggio e cura. Storie di persone che donano e che ispirano a costruire una società inclusiva. Una mano a chi sostiene. Storie.
faces an unknown future, we must recognize the fact that we simply cannot go back to our behavior from before. Both as solitary individuals and as a globe, we are in a time of deep reflection. And now, more than ever, we have the opportunity to reimagine our world. Just as we have the power to wound, we also have the power to heal. We can reimagine our world. And we are asking you to join us.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this uh, meeting. The video introduced us to the breadth and the beauty of this moment of dialogue. And I don't want to add anything because our guests will lead us into the words and images. It was useful for us to start uh, understanding something new to know that can if we give it the possibility, break through what we already know. I'm really happy to be here with these guests because with them during this year, we have come a long way that really deserves to be shared with you. This is not the presentation of the exhibition La Forma delle Parole, The Shape of Words, which has been visited by thousands of people over these days. It is an unprecedented exhibition that re explains and tells the 12 great protagonists of the Italian contemporary art in dialogue with the dreams and ideas of the younger generations. The dialogue that we are about to start is f uh, aims at focusing on the behind the scenes, the backstage of the exhibition, even more the backstage of a broad collective project, Parola ai Giovani, Word to the Youngs, uh, to the Young, which was born in 2022. And we will discover how this journey in an unexpected way gives a real contribution to the topic of the meeting and to the friendship. Why does beauty spread through art make us the rediscover friends? Pope Francis in Lisbon on the occasion of the 37th World Youth Day during a beautiful meeting with the young university students of the Catholic University said, he quoted Pessoa, a Portuguese poet of whom last year here at the meeting, we had a wonderful exhibition uh, and he was protagonist uh, with an exhibition also during the World Youth Day. And Pope Francis said, Pessoa said, in a tormented but correct way, he said that to be unsatisfied is to be a man. We must not be afraid to, be, to feel restless, to think that we are doing, what we are doing is not enough. Incompleteness characterizes our condition as seekers and pilgrims. We are on the way to somewhere. We are called to something more, to a takeoff without which there is no flight. And then Pope Francis continues, full of uh, trust in his description of our human condition. I started quoting the Holy Father because he as well is a protagonist of this adventure that we are about to tell you. So let me introduce our guests. Here with me I have Giovanni Caccamo that you saw. He is an artist and songwriter. Then Mikol Forti, art historian, curator of the Vatican Museum's collection of modern and contemporary art, curator with Giovanni of this exhibition. And then Giulia Napoleone, an artist. Laura Biancalani, General Director of the Andrea Bocelli Foundation. So, Giovanni, tell us what was the spark that set you off on this journey and what happened? The people, the young people that you involved, so please share with us your story. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, Parola ai Giovani is the result of an appeal from uh, uh, Andrea Camillari, con Camilleri, concerned for the future. He asked the youngest generation uh, how to start a new humanism. And uh, 
for the fourth time again I was in front of a white piece of paper where before starting uh, writing my fourth work and I decided to uh, work on this project where each song had to be inspired from an Italian or foreign contemporary test and I wanted to create a bridge between my generation and the past generation so I selected a series of uh, texts from uh, Battiato, Sgalambro, Pasolini, Buffalino, uh, Liliana Segre and I wrote songs on the basis of these texts, texts and within this journey I involved all a series of friends, uh, uh, sorry, of companion of this journey, so uh, Michele Placido, Liliana Segre, Peppe Fiorello, and they kind of interpreted these uh, texts each on each one of the songs. We organized then uh, a, a concert with Patti Smith in order to launch this new uh, disc, and I was more and more aware of the fact that uh, my answer was not enough for this project of uh, Camilleri because the answer of just one artist was not enough but we needed the answer of thousands of people so I decided to launch a contest uh, of ideas addressed to uh, people uh, aged less than 35 asking them what would you like to change in the society in which you are living and how would you do that and uh, thousands of people uh, answered to my contest with, through the web with uh, 15 round tables uh, and the answers came from universities, from prisons uh, and other contests as well. And each one of these young people uh, wrote a word telling behind that word his vision for the future. So we collected thousands of texts, all the texts have been carefully read and we selected 60 texts aiming at creating a book which could somehow orient uh, everybody that can be in a p moment of challenge. So it's a kind of, uh, uh, for, uh, of uh, a possibility to develop our future. So Trecani, the publisher Trecani, published a book uh, which is the Manifesto del Cambiamento and not only uh, this book describes these 60 texts which have different uh, roots. So there is, for example, the texts of a very young uh, baker that explains how uh, he does every day his job. And then there is the text from Paolo Egonu, uh, the champion of, the, of, of, of volleyball. And then there is a text written by Nar Marco Anastasio, who wrote uh, the text called Alienazione, explaining how uh, every day uh, speed is leading us, so our life is uh, led by the, the speed of the everyday uh, life. And then another young uh, uh, Egyptian that tells us his uh, trip, his journey from Egypt to uh, Italy. And then there are a couple of extraordinary artistic uh, aspects because during this journey one of the main topics emerging from young people was the actual need uh, to find new places, new agora, new places behind the beyond, sorry, the virtual world, allowing uh, people to have a real exchange of ideas and exchange of souls. So this project starts from people working alone because each one wrote his text alone, and then they've been shared at, in the universities. Then, so there was the need of a symbolic moment. Uh, where 15 of these young people could have uh, had interacted uh, among themselves. And the place we uh, selected and that has been uh, allowed us from the Vatican Museum has been the uh, Rue Stanza della Segnatura of uh, Raphael, which is a symbol uh, of dialogue and language. So on the 21st of December last year, we met there 
for five hours in order to talk about future changes and uh, uh, make drafts of uh, a chart of values for young people for the future. And this is part of our uh, manifesto of the del cambiamento, which is the uh, chart of change. And then there's been this wonderful journey with the uh, the artists and the masters, because we as young people, we believe that uh, uh, there should be a, a relationship with uh, uh, experienced and masters, uh, experienced people, because there's no future without truth. So thanks to an, uh, Antonio Spadano, I met uh, uh, Mikol Forti, who will uh, describe this aspect. And then we identified 12 uh, contemporary artists, and we pro gave them 12 texts and 10 uh, sorry, 12 uh, words of change, which were the inspiration for 12 extraordinary uh, pieces of art. And what actually uh, concludes this journey is that all the money that we will collect uh, out of this project uh, and the cattle that we will talk about later, because of course it will have a specific focus uh, on, the, uh, on these works, uh, so, as I was saying, all the money collected uh, will be uh, given to the Andrea Bocelli Foundation uh, and they will help with this money uh, young people in need in order to allow them to believe in their dreams and develop their uh, future, uh, their perspectives for the future. Mikol, Mikol, before leaving you the floor, I'd like to uh, quote and read a quotation that of a statement you, statement you made in Rome uh, during the presentation of the meeting uh, at the Italian Embassy at the Holy See. So, Mikol, you said that the centrality of the role of art and culture in our society is the uh, stimulus to the search for beauty and truth, the invitation to question our certainties, not to uh, not to settle. Nothing is taken for granted. Everything is risky, but it's the only way. It's only in this way that uh, uh, culture keeps humanity and mystery, beauty, and the sense of the sacred alive. Please share with us your thoughts. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, this is not the first time I'm coming to the meeting, but it's the first time I'm living not only an entire week, but also the what happens before the meeting uh, and the organization organization of this exhibition. And I've uh, I had the privilege to work with an extraordinary team and uh, all a series of volunteers that I really would like to thank for their very hard work. You are extraordinary and you uh, really provide us lots of energy, more than what we can give you, for sure. So questioning our uncertainties, feeding doubts, uh, challenging the rules, asking questions, uh, this is what culture, this is what uh, words, ideas, actions, gestures, art should always do because these are all uh, things and actions which are very uh, delicate, uh, which shall be uh, put forward in a very careful and patient way. Of course, rules shall be respected because uh, civil society is made out of rules, uh, but it's extremely important uh, to always challenge uh, and review the power of the values on which our society is based. Art is an extraordinary tool uh, which makes us always very careful uh, on what we're doing. These 12 words that together with Giovanni we selected and physically uh, we provided those words uh, to the artists and those of you that still have to see the exhibition will see that. So these uh, texts have been um, printed with a very specific and old traditional technique because just think that in order to make each one of, the, to print out each one of these texts, it takes four days. 
uh, with this very old printing technique. And it's important to uh, stress this aspect because the, the meaning and the sense of the time and uh, and the, rea the actual weight, the actual body of each single word on the piece of paper, but also on our mouth before pronouncing every word, because every mouth, every word that we say is fragile, but it's also extremely powerful, and it can be also dangerous. So these 12 words uh, give birth to the texts of the uh, written by the young uh, people and on these texts we can read lots of dreams of hopes but also lots of uncertainties of lots of fears and then we involved 12 Italian artists uh, well known at the international level so uh, of course we are talking about uh, uh, successful artists but also very experienced artists because the average age of these artists is higher than 80. Uh, some of them even aged even older than 90. And one of them uh, last year uh, was celebrating his 100th anniversary. Uh, one of these artists is here representing all the artists. I'm talking about Giulia Napoleone who uh, made a wonderful piece of art uh, that you can see in the exhibition and uh, hopefully she will talk about her uh, about her work about this wonderful ver verb which is spread sparter meaning spread so this relationship this friendship uh, not direct friendship between young people and the artists uh, started a mechanism which was extraordinary. You can just, you can't even imagine uh, the the approach, the seriousness with which each one of them took in charge, took charge of these words, and also the uh, all the aspects of these words, providing an answer to the here and now. What it is for me. Uh, here today, the beauty, the brave, the fact of being brave, uh, the family, and the other words, and the way they've been interpreted by uh, artists, photographers, singers, painters. So we wanted to choose several different forms of art because starting from that piece of paper, we wanted to actually create uh, a piece of art. This process was not meant to become an exhibition, as uh, Giovanni mentioned. So the uh, main goal, the final goal, was to uh, finally involve the Andrea Bocelli Foundation in order to sell uh, these pieces of art. But then the meeting really uh, wanted us to create this exhibition. And this exhibition is the result of this possibility that the meeting provided us. So we were working on this project, the pieces of, the, the pieces of text, the texts were not even, uh, had not even been provided to the artists yet. And we were already working on this exhibition because we wanted to share this creative aspect with all of you and creativeness goes beyond age it doesn't finish not even uh, when you are 100 years old and uh, this is the reason why this exhibition uh, is very open to everybody there's no wall in the exhibition we want to have this open space in order to give back this feeling of identity and thanks to Fiorenza and Martina to Fiorenza Matteoni, sorry, and Martina uh, Malcamonica, uh, two architects that uh, designed this, the spaces of our exhibition, which is a wonderful space, collecting every word with no hierarchy. So you can go around the exhibition comparing uh, the words of young people with the uh, pieces of art of our artists in order for you as well to think about this and uh, you will have the possibility to suggest your own word for change. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much. Giulia, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here with you. So a round of applause for this artist, please.
Julie, I would like to ask you what was art for you and why did you accept to uh, create this work, this play, that exhibition? What did this dialogue between generations uh, create in you? Well, I will talk about art later on. I accepted to uh, this provocation uh, from Giovanni, made by Giovanni, uh, but it was kind of obvious for me to accept it because I really believed in this uh, project. I've always been in, in contact with young people. For 40 years, I worked as a teacher, so 33 years I taught in Italy and then seven years in Syria. And in Syria, I funded uh, together with other people, uh, University of Art and Sciences, then we had to leave because of the war, but I've always been very passionate in my work. Uh, I always believed in the relationship with young people. I always supported the relationship with young people, and young people always uh, made me believe going deep into my work. Uh, my work is not easy. I really believe in my work and of course the life changes and the destiny changes, but this uh, didn't change in myself and in my colleagues. Uh, this didn't change the willingness to do something, the faith we have in our work and in our method. For me, art is the only thing which matters. And when I, when I talk about art, I mean also the relationship that I develop with the human being, with all human beings, especially with young people. Thank you, Julia. And uh, later, we will have the possibility to see the exhibition and together with you, uh, you will say a few words about your work. Laura, it's your turn now. Uh, what, what kind of, why did you collect these ideas and what is the role of the Andrea Bocelli Foundation and what will be the future for this project? Well, how many questions you're asking me? Well, first of all, let me introduce the Andrea Bocelli Foundation. Uh, it's, a, it's, a pri it's a privilege for me to be a director of the uh, foundation. And this was created 12 years ago uh, because of the idea of, thanks to the idea of Andrea Bocelli and on behalf of Andrea Bocelli, uh, I'd like to greet all of you here. He really hopes to be here with you uh, soon. So again, this was the uh, idea of Andrea Bocelli, but over these 12 years, uh, we went beyond our first expectations. Uh, this was created as a kind of a family foundation with a very few people, and soon it became what we uh, define as a, a live laboratory. A laboratory, a workshop where everybody has a role plays a role. Everybody contributes to create a physical space for time and relationships, which is useful for human beings' education. Over these 12 years, uh, and let me just mention a few figures here just to give you an idea about how, uh, when there are a lot of people believing in the same uh, idea you can achieve a common uh, and shared goal. In 12 years we collected almost 54 million euros. We have projects in many uh, countries, first of all Haiti, in Haiti, and uh, since each one of you uh, I think uh, every day is praying, please uh, pray for Haiti, a country which, which is dealing with a civil war. It's in a desperate condition. Nobody's talking about that, so please pray for them. We have uh, 3,500 kids in our schools. We have schools in Italy, and we are about to open our office in the Holy See and on the 8th of September, so it will happen very soon. And the main feature of our schools and of our way of promoting the education is to use three kinds of languages, music, art, and digital. 
So three different language approaches which have something in common, which is beauty, because we really deeply believe, and this is Andrea's credo, which, uh, j that he communicated to each one of us, that beauty will actually save the world, and beauty is at the basis of education, and this is within a space, because if you grow up in a beautiful space, you will take care of that space. If you grow up with positive relationships, you will become a positive person. If you grow up in a good and right timing of relationships and in terms, again, of relationships, uh, you will become a person uh, giving value to the persons you are addressing to. So uh, with our projects, we try to create this kind of context. And every day, every year, we try to promote and work on new uh, ideas. Our uh, mission is powering people in communities. So basically, we work on the potential of human beings. We are working in order to make sure that uh, kids and young people up to 25 years old can uh, try to work at best on their future. I can invite you to visit our website, uh, andreafoundation.org, in order to see what we created, what we did. They are not only dreams, they are realities, because within our com foundation there are skills, there are people, and there are artists as well, because our teachers, especially uh, teachers addressing to the age from 16 to 25 years old, there are artists, and one of them is Giovanni. So we started working with younger generations uh, with the idea of Giovanni during the COVID, uh, the pandemic period, we created the so-called Global Lab project, which is based in the center of Florence. And through this project, through Global Lab, we aim at working on the human being and on its, his history, on the so-called life skills. So, thanks also to the municipality of Florence, we can rely on a wonderful building in the city center of Florence. It used to be the former court, which was empty before our project, and now it's, it be, it's alive, uh, thanks to these young people, because within this space, the, the, our young people can meet professionals and artists. They have a dialogue with them trying to understand what could be their, the best path for their life. So we have, we have split them in two parts, 16 to 19 years old, mainly focused on orientation, and then 19 to 25 years old in order to approach the labor market. Uh, young people can take part in workshops, and together with us and with the artists, they can live the dimension of their potential of being. It seems to be very abstract, but this is not the case, and I kindly invite you to come to see uh, what we are doing. Please check on our websites when young people are available or when uh, Giovanni or other teachers are in the Palazzo San Firenze, uh, because you will see there a wonderful path. We saw a real change after a, 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 after a year we worked with these people, we saw them changing. Uh, our courses are held within this wonderful building, uh, and they last six months, namely the course uh, made on single individuals, so not the, not the relationship with the school institutions. And then it finishes with an exam, an exam which is focused on the path with the uh, life skills and a uh, trip, a journey to the uh, Holy Land, where so three-day journey where you test, when we test, uh, if the young people have learned to test themselves. So we'll spend two days in Jerusalem, dealing and and having a dialogue with different cultures, and then a couple of days in Bethlehem with uh, and with the refugees and with people. Uh, and cultures which are different, of course, from the one where we came from. We try to create spaces of presence where these young people can deal with their present time. And I think this is very important. Beauty, listening, and present time. These three words 
are those on which we want to invest. And we want to invest this huge heritage that we got from the artists. There will be, at the end of the year, an auction and the money collected will be used for the global uh, global lab uh, project in order to further develop the uh, skills and the potential of these young people in order to help those who are in need and do not have the tools uh, to actually fly so i kindly invite you to see what the work of giovanni because uh, some of young people of our young people have been selected in order to uh, create this document. Uh, please listen to them and try to understand that listening carefully is the secret. There's not even the need to physically support them, but listening them, guiding them, leading them is our work. So with the money collected, with by this auction, we will try to do that and we will document that step by step to each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Now let me move to two brief speeches, uh, to greetings uh, given by two people who have believed in this project and have supported it and continue to support it. First of all, Simone Arduini, Vice President of the Banca IFIS. I am so proud to represent uh, Banca IFIS here. Uh, Banca IFIS uh, has been the main sponsor of this project. Uh, and I'm also honored uh, and uh, uh, it's a big emotion to be part of such a prestigious event as the uh, meeting in Rimini. In addition to this greeting, however, I would also like to answer a question which I have asked myself. What links a bank, so Banca IFIS, to the Parola e Giovani project and to the Rimini meeting? In order to answer that, I would like to highlight three false oxymorons that we are used to believe in in our days. The first one concerns the terms friendship and inexhaustible, which are actually included in the title of the 2023 meeting. Today, the younger generations do not think that uh, friendship can be inexhaustible because they live in fast friendships, superfi superficial relationships which are not based on knowledge or on the sharing of interests and feelings. Uh, but uh, these friendships are just, uh, you know, based on a like. The meeting has had the courage to repropose a concept of friendship that, uh, as indicated in the manifesto, means sharing with the other and then put the emphasis and brings out a we which is oriented towards the common good. The second false exemplar refers to the terms words, parole, and dialogue, dialogo. We live in the era of globalization and communications, and so we know that uh, we can speak create a network uh, with uh, so many people, but it is more and more difficult to listen to the other in a more profound sense, in a deeper sense. Consequently, it is not possible to engage in real conversation, in a real dialogue as, uh, you know, a speech without listening is not a dialogos, it's not a dialogue, it does not create communication and communion. So, the shape of words, la forma delle parole, which is part of a wider project that Giovanni has already um, explained and that is in line with Giovanni's words, brings back the attention of the young people to words. 
as a means of intellectual charity, as an instrument that allows for a change aimed at creating, as Giovanni has anticipated, a new humanism. And then the third false exemption is that uh, the financial activity cannot have a human face, that there is a sort of uh, trade-off which cannot be avoided between the profitability and sociality of a business. Banca IFIS, which actively operates in specialty finance at the service of the small and medium-sized enterprises that are really the economic and productive backbone of our country, is implementing a series of projects instead. And these projects are aimed in compliance with the objectives of profitability, liquidity, and capitalization that are essential to the very nature of banking at implementing the social pillar that is the S of the well-known acronym ESG, so Environmental Social Governance. What are these projects? Uh, these projects uh, have been uh, strongly supported by our president, uh, Ernesto Fustenberg Fascio, and they have been developed through Caleidos. That is a social impact lamb, lab that uh, the bank promotes and through which it develops uh, social initiatives uh, with a high social impact in favor of the community, with particular attention to younger generations. Some of these projects are the agreement with the Bambino Gesù Children's Hospital to support research into malignant tumors of the central nervous system affecting pediatric patients and young people. And then the support to the HEAL Foundation, which accompanies young cancer patients and their families to hospitals for doctors, consultations and treatments. And we support the um, Associazione CAF, CAF Association, helping young people with difficult family situations in their social integration and in, um, finding a job. And there are many other initiatives aiming at the younger generations through sport. So we can say that Banca IFIS, through these projects for uh, the society, is implementing the operational friendship, which is core to the uh, 2023 meeting. Parola ai Giovani is actually one of these initiatives of these projects. And so in order to answer the initial question, so what connects the meeting, Parola ai Giovani, and to, 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 to Banca IFIS? It's courage. And courage is one of the 12 words which are part of the project and of the exhibition Parola ai Giovani and La Forma delle Parole. And what kind of courage? The courage to unmask, um, to, to discover, let's say, false exuberance and so to have an us that goes beyond the individualism of our days and work to support intellectual charity, which is really the foundation for the construction of all forms of material charity. Thank you. And now, Alessia Alzanelli, entrepreneur. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thanks. Uh, I would like to thank Giovanni for inviting me. Changing does not always mean to improve, but uh, in order to improve, we need to change. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, Churchill said, uh, and uh, my father used to repeat it, and uh, this statement uh, has uh, somehow accompanied me all along my personal and professional life. It has encouraged me, um, you know, to make decisions uh, rapidly and uh, back in me when needed. 
Uh, this the, the word that uh, um, represents change at best at the at this moment um, is the word help, help or support, um, meaning a real human gesture because it's easier, you know, to give help rather than to ask for help. And so we need to be willing and ready to listen and find uh, some empathy with the people and uh, find the best. And the other important thing is that, is that we um, cannot go anywhere and do anything with, on our own. It is important to uh, work and be with other people and this is something I strongly believe in. And uh, this project is a clear example of how people together can really change the world and really, you know, set that fire that can uh, um, generate a new humanism. In order to conclude, I would like to say that, uh, uh, well, there is a great beauty within this manifest, and so it's a great pleasure to be here. I'm really honored, and a special thanks to Giovanni, who is a special person and a special dreamer. Thank you. Thank you, Alessia. The friends of Palsi Luce e Gas uh, that also supported and believed in this project could not be here, but they would like to greet you all. Uh, so many thanks to Palsi as well. And last but not least, a final line of Giovanni and Mikol. Uh, so there will be a final part that we need to be waiting for. Um, so, the dialogue between generations, the fact of being friends without knowing each other, the mingling of different artistic languages, this broken question that runs through not only the, life of, the lives of artists, uh, but uh, that of each of us. What remains in you and how does it uh, revitalize you? I think that uh, uh, the word us is the real answer. One of the works exhibited, the one by Michelangelo Pistoletto, actually shows what he defines the third paradise. Uh, you will see that it is actually the reinterpretation of the symbol of the infinite. And uh, it is this you know, reinterpretation is made up uh, of uh, three circles and um, Michelangelo Pistoletto, his work is related to the word infant, childhood. And, uh, you know, Pistoletto drew three circles, a bigger one at the center and two smaller ones uh, on the sides, uh, um, meaning that, uh, you know, um, a child, for example, is not just the smaller, but it's uh, an amplification of uh, who I am. And uh, uh, this is uh, at the basis of the relations and of the relationship system that Julia also mentioned before. Uh, the word um, of Julia is spargere. Spargere meaning disseminate, uh, spread or scatter. But it also means to be ready to, you know, keep a distance uh, from uh, a gesture, from uh, a work, uh, hoping that there's somebody else ready to uh, grasp it, to keep it. It can be transformed, it can be changed, uh, and it can also become uh, sterile or die if it is not nurtured. But it's a risk that we have to take. And as a person, I should risk losing a part of myself for a part of our of us, sorry, uh, because that's how my personality can be uh, revitalized and uh, uh, strengthened. And so this exhibition uh, was uh, really based upon uh, joint effort and I wanted to underline 
uh, this, uh, you know, togetherness and what the young uh, people did with all the artists that uh, have taken very seriously this sort of uh, challenge that we launched. Uh, and let me also thank uh, the meeting with Alessandra Vitez, Cecilia uh, um, Torchiana, and uh, all the people involved in the exhibition office of the meeting. You were really extraordinary. Uh, and I would like to once again uh, uh, thank you for reflecting uh, upon, uh, you know, also this uh, uh, dialogue, collecting all the works, uh, all the texts, uh, and some wonderful pages by Antonio Spadaro, Father Antonio Spada Spadaro. Um, And uh, he is involved uh, in uh, the um, Vatican Dicastery for Culture and Education uh, of Cardinal Jose Tolentino de Mendoza, who will be with us uh, tomorrow. And uh, it was, uh, you know, also a moment to reflect uh, on both the fragility and power of words and of arts. And so let me thank once again uh, for making this project. But first of all, this dream uh, come true. Thank you. Now, Giovanni. I'd like to, let's say, say goodbye with my version of uh, change, my word of change uh, that I chose uh, uh, after a week of reflection uh, one and a half year ago. I chose uh, the word gratitude. Uh, because if we um, imagine our life as a sort of dashboard uh, uh, of an aircraft with uh, lots of uh, buttons, well, we will see, I don't know, five or six red buttons out of uh, 105 green buttons. And these six buttons represent the most important problems in our everyday life. They are the ifs or the buts, uh, but our emotions are closely related to them because in the morning when we wake up and we have a coffee, after five minutes we get angry. And I wondered why. Uh, the pandemic has switched off one of the 20, the 100 and more uh, green buttons that we didn't consider in the past. That was freedom, because with pandemic, there were things that uh, we took for granted before and uh, that suddenly became impossible to do, like uh, having a walk with a family. And so I wondered, why haven't I attached the right value to these actions? Because they are so important for my wellness, for my well-being also. And so every day we need to focus uh, uh, not only on what we have, uh, but uh, try to give the right value to what we do. And how can we activate gratitude by doing two exercises in the morning and in the evening? It's very easy, like taking a medicine. So when in the morning we are angry at a coffee time already, we need to stop, take five minutes to close our eyes, and start identifying the green buttons. Uh, for example, my father died of cancer when I was little, but my mother is still alive. So one of my green buttons is represented by my mother. My uh, grandparents are the green buttons. My voice, the sun, ice cream is a very green uh, button. So after identifying uh, also my house uh, uh, and uh, the peace and uh, the peaceful atmosphere in my village is another green button. And so at some point I closed my eyes and I started to switch off those green buttons and try to imagine how I could feel when such a button switched off. Uh, and so if I switched off my mother, I tried to connect with that possible grief and think uh, I was so happy when my mother was alive uh, and I try to understand this. And after this five minutes of this crazy exercise, uh, I will feel angry. And if I could uh, press on a reset button and uh, go back to the initial dashboards, I could understand that uh, there's a beautiful day in front of me. There was a wonderful day ahead. Uh, and I only could say thanks and show gratitude for that. Exercise number two. It's a very easy exercise. Let's uh, activate our spirituality. 
and we generally because we generally do it when we need something you know if there's a problem that we cannot manage we immediately think please help me but if i was on the other side i would tell you but you know where have you been so far and so think of the Western concept of spirituality, which is generally connected to re request, and uh, let's uh, connect it to the idea of gratitude. So, where in the evening we go to bed before falling asleep, we should uh, go back and look at our day and have some sort of, you know, screenshots, uh, 10 or 12 screenshots of our day. A day made up of light, uh, of beautiful things, a sunset, uh, uh, la forma delle parole that was here and that was uh, appreciated, the fruit of a long work. And again, ice cream, again, ice cream. I would like to underline the role of ice cream. So everything is... Mm, based on the small pieces of our days and if they are you know full of light and full of joy our light will also be full of joy this is what i want to you know communicate to you and at the end of these uh, uh, um comments that i've made i would like also to mention francesca cataldi maurizio catalan mario Ceneroli, mimo iodice mimo sgro mimo sorry mimo paladino guido strazza giulia napoleone emilio isgro uh, Fabi fabrizio plessi ferdinando scianna and maurizio catalan so i would like to thank all of them and i would like to thank also fabiana meda uh, who is the person who has uh, um, typed uh, all these words and uh, now more than ever we need uh, people who are willing to support uh, art and beauty. Sorry, remember, remember that you have to donate to give to us your word of change and you can do that on the muro del cambiamento the wall of change it was inspired by the wall uh, in jerusalem and you can go there or you can go to the exhibition we will do it later on you can write your word of change which will be included in this future wind of change allora siamo, diciamo, alla fine. So we are almost at the end. And I would like to really uh, express my gratitude and say thanks to all of you on my behalf and on behalf of the um, staff of the meeting because we have worked with great passion for one year and uh, we have seen this work really flourish uh, in um, the exhibition in front of this beauty that really never ends. So thank you once again. And then let me also thank Livia Ficoroni who is here with us. She is a Nicole's collaborator because she helped us in um, uh, the uh, fitting, let's say, of the exhibition. And maybe it wasn't easy because it was the first time for you. She also wrote all the um, texts uh, attached to the uh, images. Uh, she's part of my team as well. She wrote the captions. Um, in a minute, we will have the chance to see the exhibition also with uh, our guests. And remember that tomorrow with Giovanni, Nicole, uh, and some of the young people that are the protagonists of the project that Giovanni mentioned, there will be three showcase moments so with the piano, so um, reading words, uh, three very interesting moments at 12 noon. Uh, at 4 p.m. and at 6.30 p.m. So we would like to invite you to join us during these events. And then another uh, piece of information. In the exhibition squares and along the corridors, uh, you will have surely noticed a big red heart. These are the Dona Ora stations. Uh, um, and they are um, small. They seem to be small. But with your help, they allow us to 
uh, realize a wonderful big projects such as this one. And finally, before we leave, Giovanni, I would like to ask you for a gift. Uh, I would have uh, thought of a specific request, but it's up to you to decide what kind of gift you want to give us. Okay, um, let's conclude with a song, a song uh, on change that uh, really was the trigger. Spazi senza tempo, nuvole nell'aria, respiri, passaggi, culle di speranza, fra timori e pentimento, flussi di coscienza, fiori nel cemento, la libertà di scegliere il silenzio, ci salva dai luoghi comuni, dalle scuse, dalla sete, dalla povertà delle illusioni e dalle offese hai sentito quanta fame c'è nell'aria di un cambiamento dove siamo rimasti cosa abbiamo perduto nella fretta del tempo nel potere del nulla il valore di un pianto il respiro profondo delle piccole cose non saremo distanti dai bisogni del mondo perché nessuno si salva da solo è il momento di trovare un equilibrio di affrontare con coraggio il cambiamento la mattina dopo Grazie a tutti e a Thank you everyone once again. And now we can visit the exhibition together with our friends. Pavilion Bologna 1 B1. <laughs> dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà, lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo. Più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, 
il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Dieci racconti di solidarietà e aiuto concreto. Storie ricche d'amore, riscatto, coraggio e cura. Storie di persone che donano e che ispirano a costruire una società inclusiva. Una mano a chi sostiene. Storie.